Weapons damage human health in many different ways. To address the issue of injury and suffering. As you can see in this short film, weapons can cause serious injuries to combatants. However, as you know, HL contains in principle prohibiting superfluous injury or unnecessary suffering. Although that principle is well established, it is a notion which is difficult to define and to translate into concrete guidance. It is indeed only in general terms that the principle may be grasped. It is generally admitted by scholars, states and international courts that the principle implies some sort, some sort of balance between the suffering or injuries caused to combatants, on the one hand, and the intended military objective, on the other hand. Some consider this as involving a test of proportionality, while others reject this interpretation and prefer to reserve that notion of proportionality to the issue of protecting civilians and civilian objects from excessive collateral damage. In any case, as may be inferred from the adjectives superfluous and unnecessary themselves, which are comparative and not absolute terms, there must be some balancing or comparative test. The test for superfluous injury or unnecessary suffering would not be met in two cases. Firstly, when the use of the weapon or method of warfare causing suffering or injuries does not allow to obtaining any military advantage at all. But also, secondly, when it allows achieving a specific military advantage but causes suffering or injuries exceeding what is necessary or unavoidable to achieve that advantage. This is precisely what the International Court of Justice said in its advisory opinion in the nuclear case. According to the court, the test involved by the principle was, and I quote it, a harm greater than that unavoidable to achieve military objectives. This implies that if there are less harmful weapons or methods of warfare to achieve the same military objective, they must be employed in place of more harmful weapons or methods. Ascertaining that the principle prohibiting superfluous injury or unnecessary suffering has been violated is challenging. Like the proportionality test, which aims at protecting civilians and civilian objects against excessive damage, it requires putting balancing to essentially incommensurable values. Military advantage versus human suffering. Additionally, it is difficult to precisely quantify both the military advantage and the severity of suffering or injuries. In an attempt to clarify matters, the RCRC supported a project aimed at providing criteria to serve as an objective health base determinations for defining superfluous injury and unnecessary suffering. The project was called CYRUS, an acronym derived from superfluous injury or unnecessary suffering. According to the conclusions of the CYRUS project, a weapon had to be considered as illegal whenever its effects on human health met at least one of four criteria, including whether or not the weapon causes permanent disability or disfigurement, or mortality rate higher than 25% in the field and 5% in hospitals. That project had the merit of providing criteria for quantifying injuries. However, it was not well received by states and experts and was withdrawn in 2001, mainly because it based the legality of a weapon only upon its effects and did not longer involve a balancing test with the military advantage. 
this leads us to examine some similar opinions supported in legal scholarship on the legality of weapons. The first is that weapons should always be considered as illegal when their use necessarily causes the death of combatants, such as poison. Since the purpose of fighting is not to kill its adversary, but to put that adversary hors de combat. Weapons that invariably kill are therefore supposed to cause superfluous injury or unnecessary suffering. Some even consider that it is the expression of a specific principle for prohibiting certain weapons. However, others disagree and argue that the illegality of a weapon must be determined in each specific case, based on its use, by balancing its effects with the military advantage sought in that case. Another position is that some weapons may be considered as illegal, irrespective of any particular use thereof, since because of its specific design, its use would necessarily be contrary to the principle of superfluous injury or unnecessary suffering in any circumstances. The International Court of Justice does not seem to have endorsed such a view when it was asked to reflect on that issue in relation to nuclear weapons. Although it stated that the principle of superfluous injury or unnecessary suffering was a cardinal principle of IHL, and although any use of nuclear weapons seems difficult to reconcile with that principle, the court said that it was unable to conclude with certainty that the use of nuclear weapons would necessarily be at variance with that principle. The legality of those weapons had to be assessed in light of their specific use. More generally speaking, since the principle of superfluous injury or unnecessary suffering implies a balancing test with the military advantage obtained from the use of a particular weapon, the legality of that weapon seems to be context-dependent. <laughs>